Hi everybody, I'm Solomon, the Arkansas Diamond Miner, and uh, if you watch my last video, you know that I found a small diamond um, in the material I was washing, and uh, I'll put a link at the end of this video to show you where exactly I was washing at when I found it. Uh, so today, I'm going to make a quick video on how to register a diamond once you found one. So we'll go inside and get started. Okay, I am here at the Rock and Mineral Identification Desk, and we are going to have somebody take a look at what we've got here. Give me just a minute. Um, I'm going to take it in there and I'm going to take a look at it. Okay. Okay, so the two that I brought in, um, it looks like they are diamonds, so I got to start out by filling out the registration form. So this is how they will register the information with that diamond. So it's basically just the name, the state, and stuff like that, where I found it, and if this is my first or not. So I'll start with filling out the form and then we'll go see Wayman's. Okay, so the two that I brought in are definitely diamonds. So I'm here with Wayman and we're going to do the registration process. So uh, Wayman, kind of give us a walk through what you guys normally do when somebody brings in something that you think's a diamond. Well, basically the first thing we do is just to verify that it is a diamond. Uh, you know, most of that's a visual inspection. Uh, we do have tools that we use just to make sure, you know, like hardness, uh, testing the hardness of a diamond, we use a carbide scriber. Right. Uh, this is an industrial tool used a lot of times in like uh, uh, you know, construction, mm -hmm. uh, but it does come in handy for diamond identification because it will not scratch a diamond, but it will right. scratch just about anything else. Okay. Uh, so that's one of the simple tools we use. Uh, we also have you know uh, uh, thermal conductivity tests, things like mm -hmm. that, to kind of you know that we can further do to, to verify right. diamond. That's not like the. They sell the real small ones on the internet, but you guys have right. one that's con We have one that's a little bigger, bit more expensive right? yeah. and, and, and yeah. a little better quality uh, in, in some cases probably. But, but we use a you know, variety of tests to try to verify what something is. Mm -hmm. uh, once we do that, um, we weigh the, weigh the diamond. Mm -hmm. uh, we you know, get down to a tenth of a point, but we usually just tell you the, the whole point value right. of it. Uh, and then we record that for our records as well, so we know you know how many how, how many diamonds have been found and the weight of the diamonds. Mm -hmm. uh, we look at it under our microscope, uh, kind of tell what color it is. Um, as far as color, you know, there's a wide range of, of, of colors diamonds can be, but for the park staff, uh, we stick to white, brown, and yellow right. uh, as the most common colors found here. We're not professionally trained in, in you know what shade of yellow that is. Mm -hmm. but, but we can tell you, you know, whether it looks white, looks brown, or looks yellow. Right. Uh, we have certificates that we fill out uh, for each diamond found here. These little yellow cards. Uh, each one of them, again, basic information. It's got the finder's name. Uh, has found a diamond in the rough from Crater of Diamond State Park. Then at the bottom, we write the weight, the date it was registered, uh, and the color that it is. Which, of course, is not always the same date that it's found. It's just the date mm -hmm. that we see it here at the park. Right. Um, and that, that accompanies, that's, um, that's how people can say, okay, this is definitely a genuine Arkansas diamond. Right, right. Yeah. And, and that's part of the inspection process and identification process, too. Is, you know, diamonds are, are kind of like fingerprints. Uh, mm -hmm. They look different from different, uh, there's no two that are alike. Right. You know, and, and, and so diamonds from different mines around the world have different characteristics in common. Uh, our diamonds are all resort. They all have that smooth, rounded surface from the melting process right. that they underwent. So they're usually not, no longer an octahedron. Right, they not an octahedron. They have 12 to 24 facets, okay. uh, depending on how they were formed. Uh, and then, then we have some, like the mackle, that are real flat, triangular shape. They're mm -hmm. really unique and rare. Uh, you know, but that's part of it is verifying that it looks like a crater diamond. Right. Uh, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, uh, the, the private mine owners uh, would salt the field with foreign diamonds. They could get an African diamond, for example, a lot cheaper than they. Uh, you know, back in the back in the 50s, 60s, they would mm -hmm. they would salt the field with foreign diamonds. Uh, they'd get them fairly inexpensive, mm -hmm. and then they would go out and and uh, you know people could find them easier and say, oh, I found a diamond in Arkansas. Right. You know, we don't do that. We if it looks like a could be a foreign diamond from another mine that we I think I've seen mention. one that somebody has that I think they're actually here today that they think is a foreign that was from the earlier mining. Right, that, yeah. right, right. And occasionally we get people that buy a diamond 
you know, for a spouse or somebody that brings them in not knowing that they look totally different from our right. diamonds too. We don't ever point the finger at them and, and say, oh, you bought this for your wife or anything like that. <laughs> But we, yeah. you know, we say, unfortunately, you know, this has happened in the past that they used to salt the field, mm -hmm. and now that's kind of our job to differentiate between it. Right. It does not appear to be a native right. crater diamond. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but from there, we issue the card. Uh, you know, we get the, just the finder's name, their home city and state uh, mm -hmm. that they're from, and then uh, you know, we get issued the card. With right. the first diamonds, they get a box. Uh, we have little gem boxes, uh, just mm -hmm. like the ones we sell at the park. Um, that's the first time finders, you know, kind of souvenir, and uh, then you know, give them that and congratulate them and right. send them on their way. So. And they're free. People are free to do whatever they want to with them. They can give them away. They can sell them stuff like that. I mean, there's. I mean, obviously, there's no way for you guys to put a value on any of the diamonds. That's right. completely up to them. But right. We're not trading. Having a card to, will, yeah. to go along with it helps when they're having somebody appraise or something. It does. Like that. A lot. A lot of gemologists. Uh, in the professionals that, that do appraisals don't usually see uncut diamonds. Mm -hmm. Now the ones around Arkansas are probably more familiar with the crater of diamonds, uh, but there are people that you know that specialize in that, right. uh, in, in identifying and, and, and uh, appraising diamonds, and so that's a part of it. Like I said, we're not trained to do that here at the park. We really couldn't even put a you know, guesstimate on it, so, right. to, so to say. Uh, but you know, we do, you know recommend people like I said if you're interested in getting an appraised you know go see a gemologist go see somebody uh, you know maybe around your home state home city that is more familiar with diamonds that, that hasn't had that specialized training mm -hmm. all right so with the card um, I think the ones I've seen before you guys will emboss it and everything we do emboss the original card yes so we started that last year I believe mm -hmm. uh, we emboss it as the original diamond card uh, just another security practice to kind right. of keep them from being duplicated. Right. Uh, if somebody, say, um, say I take a diamond, I register a diamond here, and somebody wants to buy it, then I can sell it to them the price we determine, mm -hmm. and then when they come back, to they can actually bring it back to register it in their own name, right? Not registered, but they do. We do have cards that say that that we can put their name on we have to have the original card back okay. so if they buy a registered diamond uh usually comes with one of these cards we have to have this back uh, we void these and mm -hmm. then we can issue a card that looks almost identical to this uh, that has their name on it right. and the date they bring it in we don't record anything on our end uh, because it's already been registered at that mm -hmm. point uh, but it's just something you know souvenir somebody right. comes out they don't find a diamond for maybe two or three days you know, so they go to the store and they buy one, right. and then we register it or put yeah. it in their name, and then they have a, their own card. To right, take yeah, there's some local businesses here in town that sell have, diamonds that have been found here. Right, so, yeah, right. It makes right. good sense. Yeah. All right, so where, uh, where do we go from here? Um, well, I've got your diamonds weighed. Uh, I've got them here under the microscope. Uh, I've already taken pictures of them. That's another thing. We have a visual di uh, dictionary or visual uh, reference of every mm -hmm. diamond that we've had registered here over the past 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to fill out the cards. Uh, they were both white diamonds. One was two points and the other one was twice as big. So we got okay. four points. Two and four. Yeah. Okay. Not right. bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought they were getting bigger, but now I've kind of gone back down. <laughs> <laughs> Just glue them together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'll get that filled out and get you registered up. Sounds good. All right. You can see in my last video that I had set up out there, set my little wash station up, and spent the day washing gravel. And uh, so yeah, uh, four point diamond right there, you know, 50 yards, 75 yards from the visitor center. Um, so, you know, the visitor center is right over here, that direction. So walk out here, take a right, and run gravel. I hope you've enjoyed my video. If you would, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you.